Welcome to Burn Bright Today, Burn Brighter Tomorrow with me, your quantum wealth and wellness expert, Jennifer J. Marcinelli, bringing to you a holistic healing revolution, eradicating exhaustion and renewing your whole life. Whether you're a corporate executive or homemaker, exhaustion and burnout have no boundaries. I bring over 30 years of wellness and wealth expertise to this hit show, specializing in helping leaders recover from burnout and transforming themselves into the prosperous executives they were meant to be. When it comes to burnout, I have a simple philosophy. When you have energy problems, you need energy solutions. You don't have to accept chronic mood swings and exhaustion as normal. You can go from stress, anxiety, depression, chronic pain and illness to burning bright today and burning brighter tomorrow. Burn Bright Today starts right now. Hey, Burn Brighters, it's Jennifer J. So glad you are here with me. And I'm so thrilled to be bringing you along with me on my journey as a doctoral student at NCU to become a PhD and specializing in energy psychology. So we've got a big show for you today. So we're going to jump right into it. And I had originally planned to take callers during this show, but I think here's what the energies are really sorting through for us today. I've got a lot of content to share and a lot of resources. You're going to be noticing, I'm going to be citing several references and providing valuable resources for you to use during the week. And then I really, truly want you to call in to next week's show. So the more callers we have next week, the better. Call on in with your questions and your, your story. What's, what's going on and how does this show help you? So here's what we're talking about. This happens to more professional women than you can imagine. But if you are a highly intelligent, educated, professional, successful woman, possibly a visionary entrepreneur, who has been victimized by a sexual predator, this show is for you. So this show is not, warning, warning, Will Robinson, this show is not for the faint of heart. We're going to be talking about my personal story and we're going to be talking about the scientific evidence supporting energy psychology. And we're also going to be talking about the spirituality. So we're going to talk about seeing through the illusion, how we can recover move forward and heal our lives after being victimized by a sexual predator. So I'm going to jump right into it, folks. We've got a lot to talk about today. So this week in 2021, as you know, is the year of the truth shall set you free. And this is the week it's all going to happen, folks. And we do not have to be scared. We do not have to be afraid of it. This is a very good thing. The universe and the resources from heaven have all orchestrated this by divine plan, divine right timing and divine right action so that we can now face what we've been running from, our painful past, turn and face it, and we can heal it where it will no longer have power over us anymore. So I'm going to share in the next segment my personal story, but let's start with this. Let's start with you. Um, this week, the energies will be supporting, you, you may be feeling a sense of any unease the last few days, and if so, don't worry. It is high, part of how our subconscious works, our higher self pushes through our subconscious to get us to actually deal with something that we need to deal with so that we can heal and move on and go and on and have literally burn bright in our lives. And the more that we, we resist, handling whatever it is, that running thought, that's something that we're running or hiding from, it is exhausting. And it's one of the major causes of burnout and exhaustion is it's ourselves. Our mind is running in a loop and we it's time and we're strong enough now. So even if you think you're not strong enough, you are. We're going to encourage you to get the help you need and I'll provide some other resources for you to work with as well. All right, so I'm going to start off with the first reference I have for you today. Uh, from Cosmic Updates, and this is one of my favorite um, um, energy people. This is Jonathan Lionheart, and I apologize. I think I just realized I misspelled his name. It's J-O-N-A-T-H-A-N Lionheart. 
L-I-O-N-H-E-A-R-T, and he's from Cosmic Updates. And Malia is showing you the reference right now so you can follow up and get this for yourself and thank him for providing this information. But we can expect it this week. This is going to be a week where a storm might come in our life, that it might be a doozy, right? Jonathan talks about that, that the storm that comes uh, before a fundamental life change can be a doozy. So pay attention and navigate through this week. Now, this is something I've talked about quite a bit. I've been really transparent in my book, especially in the introduction. Um, I had the storm of all storms, Hurricane Harvey in 2017 that came through. That is exactly when I was sitting for boards for becoming a board certified holistic nurse. And little did I know that by changing my career path from a sales executive into becoming board certified and opening up an energy healing practice specializing in burnout would lead me to going on to get my doctorate and becoming an energy psychologist, who knew? But that storm created a ripple effect. As everyone knows, I ended up with a very, I'm just going to call it what it is, a catastrophic divorce, but the best thing that ever happened to me. So, all right. So we do not have to run and hide from these big storms, folks. Really, the whole, the best thing that we can actually do for ourselves is turn and face our fears. And I'm going to do that along with you today, because as a leader, one thing I've learned, you can never lead anybody you haven't been through yourself. And you can't lead anyone anywhere you haven't been through yourself. And we're going to, we're going to go through that today. All right, so what's going on in your life this week? Let's just pay attention to what comes up. Try to be the observer and just notice what's coming up for you to move forward. All right, is there something scary? Is there an unresolved feeling? Or is there some mistake that you made in your life that you just not had the courage to face? We've all done it, folks. Everybody makes mistakes. Earth is a schoolroom. Get over it. It's okay. Um, we're going to cowgirl up and we're going to go there, okay? Because that's what we do in Houston, Texas. All right, so I'm going to invitation, invite you to call into the show next week. Face your fears this week. Call into the show next week. Tell me how it goes. And if you need help facing your fears, call in next week and we will face them together. And I'm going to show you how. Okay, another thing I think is important for you to understand this week that your dreams may be exceptionally vivid. We've got a lot of cosmic energies coming in this week. So um, as you know from my book that I'm a huge proponent of um, dream therapy, basically. And if you already have been keeping a dream journal, this is a time to really sit down and spend some time with it and do some extra journaling. And it's a fantastic time to start a dream journal if you haven't already. Now, with the energies that are coming up this week, some of this is going to be very powerful. It may be, you may be on an emotional roller coaster. So hold up your hands and try not to throw up, okay? This is a really good week to take some time to yourself in private. Spend a lot of time in private if you can. Try to carve out some time where you can literally get into contemplation or meditation. Get your mind to settle down if you can. Sometimes burning of a candle and watching the flame is helpful. Or as you know, I like to sing the hue, which uh, we provide the link to hearhue.org. That's something that anyone can use. It's a gift. It's a gift from God, actually. Um, this will help open your heart, settle your mind, settle your emotions, help you connect with the divine so that you can face your fears and receive a healing. So I really encourage you this week, especially to take some extra time in private to do this. Now, the other thing we're going to talk about is this is a really important week. Some of the things that are, you might be, it might be time for you to face. I really invite you to call in the assistance of your spiritual guides, even if you don't know who they are. Every soul during incarnation on earth has a team of spiritual guides assigned to us. They're always here with us. The more that we call them in during contemplation or prayer or ask for their help, the more we'll build a rapport and the more support we'll have going through these things. And as a former ER critical care nurse and now board certified holistic nurse in private practice in energy medicine, nothing shocks me, okay? And I will never judge you. 
and neither will your spiritual guides. Nothing that's happened to you or nothing that you call them in to help you with will shock them and they will not judge you. They will help you through it and provide you with unconditional love. They may have to be clear with you or shall we say forthright or very direct to help you get through it, but it will always be done with love. So just trust that the universe has you back, your back and trust that your spiritual guides do as well. All right, so this is a time now, try to go out into, if, you, if you're in a private place where you can burn a candle, fantastic. Or if you can, try to get out in nature, whether you need to just watch the wind blow through the trees or watch a running brook or a stream or go out to the ocean. This is a really good time to get grounded and ask your spiritual guides for support in viewing your shadow side, because that's actually what's coming up this week. If something has happened in your life, um, if you have been targeted or stalked by a sexual predator, it's for, there's a lesson and there's a learning. Okay, we'll get into this. But what we're really doing, and these things happen to us because there's some part of our shadow side that needs to be healed or addressed or spoken to. And I just want to mention here that our shadow side does not mean it's bad. What it means is there's a part of our psyche or a part of our unconscious or a part of our energy field that we're not able to see with the, phys with the physical eyes. And that's a part of what this spiritual ascension is that's going on right now. There's so much light and sound coming into the planet as we move up to fifth, from 3D to 5D that we're now able to see what's always been going on, what's underneath. So again, this is not something that we actually have to fear. This is a time to exercise radical compassion and understanding for yourself and for everyone else. Now, this is also, as I talk about in my book, there are many energy psychotherapy uh, modalities that can help you through this. We'll get to this at the end of the show as well. But if you're needing extra support, I will always recommend that you find an energy practitioner, some type of an energy healer that resonates with you at this time and add in some form of vibrational medicine or vibrational light and sound or healing therapy to the work that you're already doing. All right. So I'm going to later in the show also provide some resources to other practitioners that you can reach out to in the privacy of your home. All right, so we're about to take a break, but before we do, let's just take a moment and just recognize this show is not for the faint of heart. The next segment, I'm going to go into the personal story. And if you are, or you know, a professional woman who has been victimized by a sexual predator, this is the show for you or the show for her. So if you do share or forward this show, I would just ask that you let that person know that this is kind of a hot topic so they're not shocked, all right? So let's take a break. We'll be back. And all right, we're going to talk about what it's like to be a highly intelligent, highly educated, visionary, entrepreneur, successful, professional businesswoman who's been victimized by a psychopathic sexual predator. See you in just a few moments. Hey, Burn Brighter. So we're back with Jennifer J. Burning Bright today and Burning Brighter tomorrow. And thank you for joining me on my journey of as a doctoral st student at NCU. Uh, moving from Burn Bright today with Jennifer J. to Dr. Jen in time. But, you know, we're living in the present moment right here. So let's talk about this. Um, I don't have the statistics handy right here. I'm now wishing I did. But an alarming number of highly educated and uh, highly intelligent professional businesswomen every year are victimized by sexual predators. And unfortunately, I'm one of them. <laughs> so I'm going to just share with you a high level view of what happened to me, just so you know that you are not alone. And if this is something that has happened to you or someone that you know, there is no blame, shame, or guilt. This truly can happen to anyone, man or woman. But since in this incarnation, I'm a female body, I'll be referring to feminine versus masculine as the people that it took place with. Okay, so here's what happened to me. In October of 2018, 
I was targeted, stalked, and completely overwhelmed by a sexual predator. And this took place, uh, the initial uh, meeting took place at a professional conference that was up at the National uh, Publicity Summit in New York, uh, pitching the practices when I first became getting into the media. And there was a speaker there who um, was selling his goods, doing a speaker. He's a very, very, at the time, popular podcaster. And this particular individual approached me in a professional manner. So here's a key that I want to just share. If you're a professional woman, first of all, especially if you're highly successful and if you are in the media, if you're a public figure, to be extra cautious and to be very discerning that there are individuals out there who can and will, they make a living of targeting and stalking people who fit a specific profile. And this is what happened to me. This individual spent a great deal of time building rapport with me as a professional business to business. So I wasn't on to him early on. Okay. If, if he had immediately hit me up as um, a romantic interest, I would have blown it off. And I was married at the time and had would not have been on to what he was doing. So I also want to refer you back to the details of a previous show that I did called Seven Signs of a Psychopath. Um, that show will go into more of the details. You can review that so we don't spend precious time um, outside of the scope of the show today. But what this individual did was spend a significant amount of time, there's a formula that they follow, of building rapport, getting you to trust them. And meanwhile, they are learning you. They are studying everything about you that has ever been on social media, that's ever available anywhere in public records. Anything that you've ever done on your platform, books that you've written are all up to be reviewed and manipulated. And I also, in the moment here, we're going to post a referral to Dr. Sam Vaknin. He is arguably the world's leading expert on narcissistic personality disorder and psychopaths, mainly because he is one and he will be very upfront with you about this. This is why he's so good at what he does. Um, a part of how I survived what happened to me was learning from Dr. Sam Vaknin who these people are, how they work, how their brain thinks they have additional skills and abilities. And in this video, Dr. Vaknin outlines that these guys have x-ray vision. They can read through your energy field. They can read your thoughts. They can read your emotions and they can read any lie that you're telling yourself or any fantasy that you're creating. They can read it and they can use it and they will. And that is what happened to me. So over a period of months, um, this individual, once he learned that I had filed for a divorce, that's when he made the switch and he turned from professional to romantic interest. And just so you know, he completely had me. Everything on my side of the relationship was real. I, the love that I felt for him and what I thought I was creating for me was real. I truly believed I had met my other half. I truly believed I had met what some people might call um, a twin flame. I don't use that term, but you get the point. And that is because these psychopaths are very, very skilled at mirroring parts of you back. So the person you're actually falling in love with are all of the attributes of yourself but it looks like it is that man who is very good looking, charismatic, highly intelligent and exceptional between the sheets. It's just how it is, okay? These guys, the, the best sex you ever have is with a psychopath. We just don't need to go there again, all right? It's just a fact of who they are. It's how they steal your energy. All right, now, once the, the relationship became romantic it was for a very short period of time and thank God he lives around the world because if he lived in the United States and had access to me, this would have been a much more difficult relationship to end. But thank goodness, and I mean that with all sincerity, that he lives in New Zealand and does not live in the United States. Um, I was completely unaware of some of the sex trafficking and human trafficking taking place out of New Zealand, many, many countries, but I had no idea this was going on. 
So um, this is something, School of Hard Knocks, I'm sharing this with you to know that if this has happened to you, you are not alone. Now, a part of Dr. Sam Vatman's teachings is that to get a psychopath, a narcissistic personality disorder to leave you alone, one of, it's not what you think. We are taught in society to never speak about it, never say their name, and I 100% completely understand why violent crime rape victims do not ask for, they, do, they will not report a rape or why they will not uh, report to the authorities, name the person, name the assailant, or even avoid a rape kit. I totally get it. Um, I understand what you're going through if that's in your, if that's your state, if that happened to you. Mine was not a violent crime. It was an energetic crime. Um, it was not a violent rape. It was cons non-consensual, consensual sex that turned out to be energetic rape. That's exactly what it was. It was an energetic crime. I would never have en entered into a romantic relationship um, with this gentleman if I had known he was a fraud and if I'd known this is what he was up to. Again, I truly believed and loved this person and thought we were building something beautiful and that we would be a king and a queen with our two companies in business together, supporting each, each other's business, supporting each other. That for me was very real. Now, I'm going to get a little raw with you here, okay? So just heads up. As a part of the healing, it is very important to speak your truth. And we're going to talk about this in the next segment. I will exercise caution, but right now I'm going to go there. I'm going to cowgirl up and I'm going to do what I'm going to ask you to do for yourself when the time is right in a safe environment. And for the first time ever, I'm going to speak his name. The psychopathic sexual predator who targeted, stalked, and completely overwhelmed me. His name is, he also goes by the name and his company is, he's in the media. He lives a double life. This is one of the signs they have two names. And I'm saying his name now with love. I bless you and I release you. And I am so grateful that you did what you did because I'm in a far better place now. We're gonna to get to that in the last segment. But you can no longer hurt me. I am no longer afraid of you. There is nothing you can do or say. You cannot come back. You cannot get near me. And you can never, ever energetically harm me physically, mentally, emotionally, or spiritually ever again. Thank you for this valuable lesson. Thank you for being such an important part of my life and for teaching me and providing the gifts that you provided me. It's over. You can never hurt me again. And most importantly, you can never love me again. And you may never have the love that I had for you again. We're going to take a short break and we're going to come back. And what we're gonna talk about now is the why. Because the biggest thing I'm seeing in my practice, and this is some of the tenets of psychology, is to understand why these things happen. And once we can understand why people do, people can harm others and live with themselves, we'll get into this topic. And why loved ones misbehave, we're going to talk about that and how we treat them and how we handle it. But we're also then going to go into the segment of healing. So once we understand what the why of some of these things happen, then we can get into on onto a path of actual healing and we can get to the light you can get if this has happened to you you can get through this move far past it and get to your life where i am today i love my life i am successful i am happy i am happy by myself and i'm successful by myself and i'm whole and i'm healed and I have more love in my life now than I've ever had, even if I'm not actually dating a person. <laughs> so we're gonna go into that right now. Let's take a break. And when we come back, we're gonna talk about how to move forward. The first step is understanding why.
thanks for hanging in there with me and I'm so glad you're back in. Heavy topic today and just uh, you're welcome to visit burnbrighttoday.com, uh, visit my blog posts and I also invite you to visit my past show, a recent show, The Seven Signs of a Psychopath that will help you um, get an idea for some of the behaviors to watch out for in other people. But you know what? As Dr. Sam Vackman teaches, we also want to watch that make sure that we are not exhibiting any of those behaviors either in any way, shape, or form. Because if we are, we are certainly going to attract somebody, a big bad wolf, okay? If in some way, shape, or form, we are exhibiting any of the behaviors of narcissism or of at that of a psychopath, you, the, the universe works. This is how it works down here. And we will absolutely be paired up with somebody bigger and badder than us to get us to learn this lesson and change any of our behaviors. All right. So this is not a time to go too much into blaming yourself. We're not there yet. And that's way long and further into the healing process when we start talking about the part that has to do with your responsibility. We'll touch on it though. All right, so right now, let's. I'm going to go into some of this in this segment. We're going to go into the some of the scientific evidence that will help us understand some of the reasons of why. Because a big part of what I could not get over was why did my former spouse and his attorney, why did they commit such heinous crimes and how could they live with themselves? And why did the sexual predator what's up with these people? How can these people actually commit these heinous crimes and live with themselves? You know, what gives, all right? So I'm going to refer to a couple of journal articles and I'm citing the references here for you. So if you're a science nerd like me and are a clinician and you would like to pull up these papers, we're citing the actual reference so you can pull the author's uh, peer reviewed journal, revealed journal articles for yourself. Or if you're not, and you're just curious, you want to take a look at some of this and, and begin educating yourself and being discerning with your information, I invite you to use Google Scholar, not just Google. Google will not give you, it's very limited in academic or peer-reviewed scientific information. So I would invite you to try Google Scholar and Google these papers, and you can download them for yourself and Educate yourself, and if you're a practitioner, perhaps this is something you want to add into your energy psychology practice, or if you're an energy healer, perhaps you're considering getting a master's degree or a PhD and publishing your findings. So, all right, so let's talk a little bit about, um, and I'm actually, Malia, I'm just gonna add one article in here, and I apologize, I don't have the APA format. I'll get that to you here in a moment. So everyone be patient. I'll get this proper um, citation to you. But this is um, chapter 88, The Cognitive Neuroscience of Moral Judgment and Decision Making by Green and Young. And this publication is actually from Neuroscience and Society. So I'm reading to you from a formal document. But a part of what I love about this article and what is so helpful about it is it covers cognitive neuroscience, which is the part of science that aims to understand the mind in physical terms. So the physical structures of the brain that influence how we think, influence our emotions, and influence our behaviors and our decisions. All right, so a part of this study talks about the paradox of the moral brain and how that can be taken over by other, uh, other influences, if you will. There is another topic on called bad brains, the neuroscience of morality. It begins to study brain damage leading to antisocial behavior. And he goes into, they go into um, the moral deficits of a psychopath. But this isn't just, um, they're not just talking smack here, folks. Um, they're literally talking about many studies, and, and again, in reference, they're referencing here many, many studies where psychopaths, the psychopathic behavior is also linked to many things, but it can be linked to damages of the amygdala, dysfunctions in the, the, the amygdala, um, different areas of the brain that can literally be damaged or not properly formed or injured. And when 
this can cause psychopaths to harm impulsively or it affects their moral judgment. And this can happen to any one of us, okay? So we're not judging here, we're just objectively trying to understand. And this particular study goes into, and it's outside the scope of the radio show here to formally present this paper, that's not my intention. My intention is to provide you with some scientific evidence that you can review on your own to get a better understanding of the, the dysfunctions in the brain that cause some of these problems for people, all right? Um, another part of it is the somatosensory region of the brain. Um, there's multimodal coding. There, there's many different areas of the brain that can be impacted, that can literally, from a neuroscience point of view, cause people to have issues with moral judgment and decision making. So why am I sharing this with you? Because when I began studying psychology, working on my doctorate, and I began starting to review some of the scientific evidence, seeking to understand what happened to me in my divorce and with the sexual predator. It was very healing to me to understand that there can be physiological reasons in the brain that people behave the way they do, why they can cause such harm and live with themselves or not even recognize that this is that they're in this state or what they're actually doing to themselves and what they're actually doing to other people so having this scientific evidence has truly helped me heal because for me okay for me it really helps with forgiveness when i can understand that in the last three years, the people who behaved so badly and truly, truly harmed me physically, mentally, emotionally, and financially, that there are cognitive neuroscience reasons that they may have behaved that way. It does not in any way, shape or form, excuse their behavior. Justice will be served, whether in heaven or whether in the judicial system, okay, as appropriate. But what this does for me is it helps me forgive because I can actually forgive someone with a brain that is undeveloped or they've had some type of an injury, some type of a physiological reason that they've behaved this way. This for me was a true moment of healing when I recognized this. And I hope that perhaps some of this scientific evidence can bring a healing for you as well when you're ready. All right. The other, the next paper, and Malia is going to post this. This is a peer reviewed scientific journal article from the Journal of Personality and Social Psychology, Attitudes and Social Cognition. And this paper is titled, When the Ones We Love Misbehave, Exploring Moral Processes Within Intimate Bonds. And this is by Rachel Forbes and Jennifer Steller, Department of Psychology, University of Toronto. All right, and I'm going to again highlight this. And you may you know, want to use Google Scholar to download this and research it because this particular paper does a fantastic job of studying and trying to generate an ecologically valid understanding of moral perception, all right? And a part of what they do is it explains their, their critical emotions of anger, disgust, and contempt, or self-conscious emotions of shame, guilt, and embarrassment. And then there are, of course, distractors of emotions, happy, upset, and compassionate. But to just sum this up briefly, very, very high level summary of this study that they've done, is that what happens is this study found, and again, I'm my own understanding of reading this paper, you form your own, please is that we may react differently to romantic partners, friends or family who misbehave. We may make excuses for them. We may tolerate their behavior. We may ignore yellow flags. We may ignore red flags because we love them and because they're close to us. And we, this study says that they found these, these authors found that people are very likely to hold 
complete strangers to much higher um, lack of tolerance and punishment to a total stranger than they would their family members. And in other words, I'm going to turn this around just a little bit and put this is my spin I'm now putting on this paper. You read the paper and get your own. Okay, but what this paper means for me, this showed in a scientific evidence exactly what I had done. And a part of what I had done was ignored caution flags. I ignored red flags. And early, early, early in discussions when something wasn't right or somebody wasn't treating me right or someone wasn't um, giving love back, when I was pouring out and somebody wasn't pouring back, I made excuses for them and I allowed bad behavior that I would never have tolerated for a, a total stranger. So I invite you to take a look at the study, download it from, see if you can find it on Google Scholar and see if, again, if this particular study might bring some healing for you. All right, so we're coming up to a break. And in the next segment, we're going to talk about, okay, so now what? We've got a little bit of scientific evidence. Not everybody's made, right? Okay, <laughs> we aren't either. Thank you, Elon Musk, for helping us realize we're all on the spectrum, <laughs> okay? Um, but what we're going to talk about now is a holistic approach to how you can heal. And I will mention, I'm going to mention a little more scientific evidence, uh, Mason's paper here, but then we're going to go into spirituality. And we're going to talk about other aspects that we really need to address in order to heal. Even if we are a professional who has been targeted, stalked, and completely overwhelmed and stolen from energy, time, resources, finances, skills, abilities, contacts, business contacts, whatever was stolen from you, this, this underwhelming, overwhelming underlying exhaustion. We're gonna talk about taking a holistic approach and things that you need to know so that you can heal and move on and get burning bright today and burning brighter tomorrow. Talk to you in a few moments, folks. Hello, Burn Brighters. It's Jennifer J, the future Dr. Jen from burnbrighttoday.com. And thank you so much for being here today. I know this is a big topic that we're tackling and we're going to move on now and let's start talking about if you are or know a professional businesswoman who has been victimized by a psychopathic sexual predator, there's hope and there is help, there is understanding and there is holistic healing. And you truly can do exactly what I've done and move, move from being completely burned out to the point where in the month of August of 2019, I literally, there were four times during that month that really stand out in my mind when I was working with energy healing practitioners, um, energy psychotherapy, working with my spiritual guides, gemstone and diamond therapy, um, very, very intensive. I had an entire team of experts, including psychotherapy, to help me survive the energetics of this energy crime that had, that had happened to me um, before, okay? And what we're talking about is this can be unbelievably exhausting. It can be, even if this happened years ago to you, and if it's running around in your mind right now and you still have an uneasiness, or this is something you know that now is the time you have to face, you can face it now because number one, the energy support it and you're strong enough and there are resources to help you, all right? There are new emerging resources to help you as well that may not have even been available or widely known in the media, even in the last number of years. All right, so let's talk about now, we're gonna take a holistic approach, but I'm gonna begin with some scientific evidence. Um, and we're gonna talk about if the field of energy psychology is new to you, uh, let me just start off with a paper that can get you started if you wanna start researching this for yourself. And this, type, this paper, this is a peer reviewed journal article, uh, author is Elizabeth Mason. The uh, it's 2012, September 2012, and the title is Energy Psychology and Psychotherapy, a study of the use of energy psychology in psychotherapy practice. And it's in the Journal of Counseling and Psychotherapy Research, September 2012. 
and we'll put the volume and the page numbers in the description. And again, you can look through Medline or your favorite um, database, or you can also try to get this through Google Scholar. All right. So, and thank you to Elizabeth Mason for publish this very important publication <laughs> and helpful, how truly helpful this publication is. And from this publication, I'm just going to share a high level just to get you introduced to energy psychology. And I'm just going to quote from the paper here, okay? And I'm reading to you from the introduction. You'll see this when you download the document. Energy psychology, or EP, refers to a range of therapies that link psychological and physiological distress with disturbances in the energy fields of the body, which comes from Gertemeyer in 2002, as cited by Mulan in 2005. Because what we're really talking about here is really beginning a holistic approach to support the powerful modality of psychology and psychotherapy. There are many modalities that you can look into. And some of these you can do at home. You can study these for free. You can even research some of these on YouTube. And I'm going to list some of them. And many of them are listed in my book. So I'll go through those as well. One of the first energy, energy modalities that you can look up on YouTube, okay, is tapping. T-A-P-P-I-N-G. Emotional freedom technique. Look this up, find it on your own, or your own, and you can begin to learn how to do emotional freedom technique, okay? At home, anywhere you are, it is easy to understand. Anyone can do this. I have taught this to children in my practice, all right? This can help get those trapped emotions out of the meridians and out of your energetic anatomy and out of your physical body. Cheap and easy, it's free, anybody can do it, super simple, all right? So look up emotional freedom technique. Okay, some of the other therapies that I'm a super fan of are Reiki, uh, you're real familiar with that, we talk about it all the time, it's in the book. And as you know, I am a huge proponent of crystal healing, of gemstone and diamond therapy. Now, for me, my case was severe, and maybe yours isn't, but if you get to a case, if you, if you get to a point where You've been doing lots of physical, lots of psychotherapy, psychology, psychotherapy, and you've hit a roadblock and you just can't get over it. And you're having really a lot of difficulty, even if you're using EMDR, actually getting some of those trapped emotions out of the physical body. I would encourage you and invite you to find a gemstone and diamond therapy practitioner that you're comfortable with uh, across time by telehealth. Uh, you can book a session and not even have to be there for it. You can actually, it's kind of like making an appointment there because the wonderful thing about energy healing is it is not trapped by the limitations of time and space. And what I have found is that when crystal healing or vibrational medicine modality of gemstone and diamond therapy is added to psychology or psychotherapy, it takes the healing to a whole nother level. And if you are, consider yourself a spiritual person and you have a practitioner that is the ability to see and communicate and speak and work with your spiritual guides or your galactic family, it can really take your healing to the whole next level. So there's a lot of really, really good energy healers out there right now. Just find the person that works best for you. Okay. All right. So let's circle back for a moment about speaking your truth because i did that in a very big way with you today because i believe that you know see one do one <laughs> i teach one and let's talk about speaking your truth but i am going to encourage you to exercise some caution use discernment when speaking your truth number one begin in a private place i would recommend beginning with a qualified practitioner or therapist that knows how to create a safe and sacred space so that you can speak your truth without a couple of things happening. Um, number one, it doesn't come back to bite you in some way, or you don't create unnecessary karma by putting something out that will boomerang back and harm you because that's not what we want to do here. We want to help you heal. We're not out to punish people. Okay. Use impeccable discernment of what you post on social media. What we post on social media carries an energy vibration and it creates. So if 
you find yourself raging to a person or raging on social media, that energy is going out into the universe. It's harming others. It's harming you. It's making the situation worse. And it's creating a, a vortex, if you will, a, a, a boomerang vortex that just harms everyone and makes it worse. There is a time and an appropriate way to speak your truth. And we want to take that in the proper steps so that everyone, for the greater good of all concerned, just as I did with you today, I was not able to speak his name until I was so far on the other side of it that I'm no longer angry at him. That all had to be done in private protected sessions so that I couldn't harm him and I couldn't harm myself or harm anyone else, you know, in, in the world, actually. All right. Okay. So again, be very, very careful about speaking your truth and work with a licensed professional who can help you do so. All right. So how do you know when you've healed? First of all, you're going to know when you can say their name without fear of reprisal, that you can say their name and you're no longer mad at them. And that's when true forgiveness and grace settle in. And they, it you've taken your power back in a graceful spiritual manner where both of you can now move forward spiritually on this ascension process. In the last couple of moments, before we wrap up here, I just want to say this, that you'll know that you've healed also when you know that no one is at fault. When you know that this was a karmic soul contract agreement that both of you agreed to during this, you know, prior to this incarnation, and you're working out something really important for both of you, because everyone is ascending, everyone is going to the fifth dimension on their own timeline. So there is, as Dr. Sam Vaknin will also teach, there is some part of yourself that you're healing and facing, all right? When you get there, you can then realize the gift that he's given you and the gift that you're giving others. All right. So for next week, folks, I'm going to, this is an open invitation. Please call into the show. What are you overcoming? What resources did you use? How did they work? What worked? What didn't work? What vibrational therapy? What energy psychology did you look into? What modality did you try? Or if you're a practitioner, are you looking at adding an energy psychology to your practice? All right. I'm going to leave you with that. And in the last few moments here before we end, have a wonderful week. I know it's going to be a roller coaster. Hold up your hands. Try not to throw up. Okay. I'm here for you. We're coming back next week. Please call into the show and let's speak your truth and let me help you help yourself. All right. Burnbrighttoday.com, everyone. Visit the website, post, let me know what you think, ask your questions. Please call in next week with your questions, comments, concerns, and um, anything that you don't mind two or three million people hearing about, all right? So take care. Bye for now and see you next Monday. Ciao. Thanks for listening to Burn Bright Today with me, Jennifer J. Marcinelli, so you can burn brighter tomorrow. Burnout can feel like a heavy cloud hanging over everything you do, but a holistic healing revolution and a life you love is within your grasp. Catch me next Monday at 9 a.m. Pacific, 11 a.m. Central, 12 p.m. Eastern on TransformationTalkRadio.com. To learn more about me and to schedule a quantum healing session, visit BurnBrightToday.com. See you next time.